Hey, welcome to Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'm Lee, and in this video, I'll show you how I painted my Lehman Russ in the camouflage pattern. In this video, I'll go through the techniques I use to paint my Lehman Russ tank to this level. And this is what I've used for all the tanks in my Astra Militarum army. I'll include lots of details like the spotlight, the effect on the Gatling cannon, the red viewing ports, and also the Aquilas and other symbols on the tank. Now I haven't done the weathering or the decals or a mud effect yet, and I'll be doing that in different videos that'll come after this one, but this video is gonna include everything up to this stage. So that's all you really need to get the tank done, and then it's your preference for different types of battle damage, how much mud and weathering effect you put on it, and then where you wanna put the decals. But I'll be covering that in detail later on. So let's get started and I'll take you through all the steps that you need to follow if you'd like to paint your Lehman Russ in this style. I've already primed the model using the surface primer from Vallejo and I went for this bronze green color and so I thought that was a really nice way to start. Then I used the US light green 71.137 model air to give it all one coat all over the tank and also on the turret. Now I'm using the airbrush again here. You don't have to use an airbrush. You could certainly just paint this on no problem, but the airbrush makes it really fast. And I did all my tanks at the same time. That's 23 uh, vehicles, I think, all at one go. So this made it really fast to get it all completely covered. So I'm going over it, taking my time, thin layers, building that up. And then don't forget that turret, get that done as well. So I'm going all over it. I did a little bit underneath but focus mostly on the top area. And I'm just trying to move the piece around rather than my air gun. So just doing that there is giving that a nice coat. I'll be doing lots of videos about airbrushing really soon. So look out for these coming to the channel. And don't forget all the accessories as well. We've got this little aerial here and lots of other pieces like the weapons and things like that. Then when that's dry, it's got this really nice rich green colour. So I was really happy with how this turned out. Underneath I didn't put much on there at all, so that's mostly the primer underneath. But on top we've got that nice solid green colour on the turret as well. But now we want to create that camouflage pattern. And so to do that I'm going to be using blue tack, And this is the finished product on a Hellhound. So this is the effect I'm going with with the Lehman Russ. I've gone with just two colours, a light green and a darker green, but you could certainly use like a little bit of tan in there or black as well, so it's really up to you. But for me, I was happy how this came out. I'm going for a woodland jungle theme, so I thought this really fit in well. So the first step with the blue tack is just to cut it into strips and then just smooth it out so it's got this like organic look to it. So making lots of nice curves and then I'm popping that on to create a pattern and that's going to be a way of masking it so I keep that nice light green colour underneath when I spray over the whole model with dark paint later on. And I'm using some images I found online of tanks models that have been camouflaged already and I'm using that as a guide to help me decide where I want to put this. And then I'm doing it differently for every single tank so no one tank is going to look the same and it's going to be completely varied and natural throughout the whole army. So once that's done, you're going to have something that looks a little bit like this. But then you've got to put the turret on. And I think it's important to continue the pattern with the turret. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'll put the turret on, line it up, and then I'm going to go over with a bit more blue tack and just continue the flow of that camouflage over the turret. That way, when I take it on and off, it's going to fit nicely. And then when it turns, it's still going to be fine. As long as you line it back up, it's going to look like it's all one complete vehicle. So that's ready now to spray. So it's back to the booth. And now I'm using a darker green. This is the Russian green 71.017, another model air. And this is going to really bring out those nice patterns and shapes that we've created with that blue tack. So again, just taking my time, building it up slowly in layers, and then that's going to create the camouflage pattern. So it really is as simple as this. Now, again, you don't need to airbrush. You could do this with a brush and you could paint it on. I definitely recommend watering that paint down and doing two or even three coats of it, and then you'll get a nice crisp finish. But if you're using a brush, just make sure that that blue tack is really tightly stuck down around the edges in case the bristles go underneath it. But you can always tidy it up once you take the blue tack off. But with the airbrush, you won't have to worry about that. 
So once that's dried, and it doesn't take long, it's time to peel off the blue tack. And this is the exciting part now, as you'll get to see that pattern for the first time. And so take your time picking it all off. As long as it's dried, you're not going to smudge it or anything. And leaving that primer for 24 hours is very important. I didn't say that earlier, but make sure you do that. Otherwise, you may find that some of that paint comes off. So there we go. That's the look we're going for. Really happy with how it comes out. Take that off the turret as well. And we've got ourselves a Lehman Russ in a nice woodland camo design. And there it is with the turret placed back on as well. So really nice, comes out really crisp with that blue tack and the air gun. Now it's time to start painting all the details. So I took some base lead belcher and because I'm doing a lot of tanks at the same time, I watered it down in a pot. So I took another pot, put some of the lead belcher in it, added some water and then you can see it's really thin. This is running out of that lid really easily. So that's watered down nicely now and then I'm going to go over all the track guards with this with one coat. So make sure it's really well shook up and stirred together and then it'll store like this so you can use it again as long as you keep shaking it that's no problem. So now I'm going to grab a flat brush like this. My brushes are in a terrible state um, but just ignore that. Just use a nice flat brush because this will be a lot easier and then because it's watered down this is going to make it a breeze to paint. It's going to be really quick and easy and it's going to flow nicely into all the textures of that track. So just go along, take your time though, you don't want to get it over the green parts. I mean if you get a little bit on there it doesn't really matter, especially by the time you highlight it later on and then add some weathering effects if you want to. But this is what we're going for. I even do underneath just in case I want to tip it upside down if it gets destroyed in a battle or something like that. Then when that's dried, I took some oil wash. Now I made this and I've done a separate video on the channel which I'll link to at the end of this video if you want to check that out. And this made it really quick to do some panel washing. So I did some panel line washing here. And what I've done is I've just gone along every single little bolt or rivet and I just put a little dot of the wash and I do that over every single dot of every tank and again I did this all at once. This took me quite a long time, a whole day in fact to do all the vehicles like this so it was worth doing though, I was really glad I did it but man by the end of the day I was happy to finish. I made the oil wash up in a pot so I could use it later on, um, but I ended up using the whole pot with the, with the army. So yeah, didn't have to worry about keeping it. But here you can see I'm just going along these lines, but it flows really well on its own in there. That's the beauty of this. So trying to do this with Agrax Earthshade would have been a lot messier, would have took a lot longer. But doing these little dots here, it really flows nicely all around in one go. So really quick, but when you're doing 20 odd tanks, it's not so quick. With this kind of wash, you can completely cover the tank if you want to and then rub away any excess later on. And um, there's lots of different ways of doing it. You can even cover it completely in Agrax Earthshade. But this is the style that I've gone for. You have got a lot of options though. When it completely dried, I moved on to some dry paint now. And this is Nurgling Green. You can see this doesn't come out. It's not like a regular paint. It's almost got like a, a jelly, like a spongy blancmange feel to it. And I'm going to take my Citadel dry brush. This is the quite large on here but medium size and then this is going to go in there get some on the bristles and then I'm going to just work that into the bristles on a little piece of cardboard and so just go back and forth working it in and then I'm going to start using this to do all the edge highlighting so now I'm going to use that side of the brush and just work my way along all these sharp edges of the model and let the model do the work for you just go along and that's going to take that highlight really nicely so I do that all over taking these nice big lines and just moving that tank as much as I can. So I'm trying not to move myself too much, but move the tank, make it really easy, make sure you can get nice angles with that brush. And you should get some nice crisp lines from this. If a little bit smudges on, again, it doesn't really matter because later on it's going to be covered up anyway. On these bits, you can see when I've got less paint on the brush, I go over it from side to side pretty fast and that brings out all that nice rich texture. Same again, load the brush up and then do the turret going all along there like that. And you can just be really gentle with all the rivets as well, just catching the tops of those and that brings it to life. So you could go a little bit brighter if you want, but I'm leaving it at this stage. Now it's time for the regular lead belcher. Water down a little bit though, and then I'm going to paint over the front part of the cannon here. I'm also going to look at painting other sections like the sponson weapons. And then at the back of the tank, you've got these metal grills. So I'm going to paint those in there as well. 
and then just pick out any other little bits like we've got the little buckles on this barrel that I decided to put on and also I'm painting the top of the exhaust in the metal not all of it just the top I think that's enough and then we can put some null oil on that once it's completely dried so let's grab that null oil and then we're putting quite a bit in here and this is going to dirty up all those areas and then bring that in line with the rest of the tank go around there too all over the exhaust and then all over the front of the Gatling cannon. I also went along the barrel because I thought that would just be pretty greasy and greased up oiled and everything like that so I put that on there and then that's pretty much it. Cover all those sponsor weapons as well I've gone all over those and once that dried I moved on with the muzzle burn and for that I took some Drakenhof nightshade and then I took a contrast paint Magos purple and another shade this time it's Seraphim or seraphim sepia and these three colors are going to give that muzzle burn effect so first i start with the drakenhof nightshade and i go around just the front part of it here and just do one line all around it and then also covered the front where you can see the end of the barrels there so quite generous on that part then once that dried i went over with that contrast paint of purple and did another stripe just overlapping the previous stripe that i did and then once that was completely dried, I moved on to the final shade, that Seraphim Sepia, and did one line of that too. And that's it. Nice and easy, really quick to do. So I'm not trying to blend this or wet blend it on the model. Just one simple line of each, waiting for each to dry before you do it. Then it's time to take some corn red base paint. And this is going to be watered down. And I use a wet palette, roll my brush through it to get a nice tip. And then I'm going to paint in these little viewing ports and sensors on the turret. So I end up doing about two coats of this. So I let the first one dry, then go over it again. Then I take some Wild Rider Red. This is an orangey red. Water that down again. Almost one part water to one part paint. And I'm going to do this at an angle now. So I'm going to paint about half of it so you can see there's an angle. But I only do one coat. Then when that dried, I took some Layer Flayed One Flesh and just popped a little dot to be like the highlight in the top corner. Now you could leave it like this, but what I wanted to do was just blend it a bit. So I took some Karaberg Crimson Shade and I've done one coat of that all over it. And that's just gonna make those different colors blend into each other a bit nicer. So it's not so bold from one color to the next. Now it's time to do all the Aquilas and the other motifs. So I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm using the side of my brush with this gray paint and I'm just bringing one coat over that trying to get the model again to do the work for me so I'm just using the side of my brush and getting all that texture to come off and take the paint from the brush so I'm not trying to paint it on really carefully here but I am just going along following the, the shape and the contours of the model so that that paint goes on nice and crisp now this looks really neat but you can see I'm not being necessarily neat with the way I'm doing it so a really nice technique this and the same with the Aquila here on some of them they're quite flat so you might have to be a little bit careful here, but the same technique, just use the tip and the side of that brush so it catches the paint. And then here we've got the little laurel leaves and another skull. So just give that one coat too. And I've watered this paint down. Again, one paint, part water, one part paint. Then I take some Macrag Blue of base paint, and this is gonna just fill in this whole area of the spotlight. So two nice coats, so it's nice and solid, again, watered down. And so I just continue to do that to cover it, taking my time, moving the model rather than myself so I don't go over the green areas. When that's dried, I took some Lothurn Blue, lovely colour, watered down, and then I'm just going to paint a little line here at the top. That line is going to go on the next section, a little bit smaller, almost to make like a little cone or a Wi-Fi symbol, and then a little dot on there. And then I repeat that on the bottom but I turn the model around so it's easier for me to do it and I make sure I'm nice and comfortable so I don't shake too much then I take some white scar layer paint and once that's dried I'll just go over with a little bit of a smaller line again trying to create that wi-fi kind of symbol and then that's going to give an effect of a spotlight and from a distance I think this looks pretty cool if you go up close it's not going to look very good but you know we are playing from a good few feet away from our models most of the time so a few dots here, and then that just adds to the effect nicely. While I've got the white out, I've gone back to all the symbols, and I'm just doing a, like a highlight around some of the edges, trying to pick out some of the most prominent parts, and just going over it with lines, dots, 
just to bring out a little bit more of a texture, add a bit of interest to these shapes. Same with the skull, pick out those high points, the eyebrows, cheeks, top of the head, and then just put little dots of white. Again, from a distance, this is gonna just all blend in. Up close, you're gonna see it a bit more crisper, but you want the effect to be quite subtle, just to give some kind of 3D effect from a distance. So just keep going until you're happy with it. You, know, you can put as much or as little as you want, be as subtle or as bold. Then I took some shade, some Agrax Earth Shade, and this is gonna be for all the tracks now. And I'm putting quite a lot on, I'm being quite heavy, but I'm being careful as I do this because I don't want it to run too much onto the rest of the tank there. So I'm being very careful. You can see I've got quite a bit of paint coming off. So I'm just dabbing it on, making sure it goes into the, those little contours, all the different shapes, and then just go down the side really gently as well. And then do the same underneath, but with a little bit less paint, I'm not being quite so much underneath there. And you can be a bit quicker going along in a line then like that. So this doesn't take long actually to do all the tracks. So again, doing all the tanks at the same time. And once that dried, that's the tank finished to this stage. Now we've still got to do the weathering, still got to do some battle damage and add the decals and paint the driver. But as far as it goes, this tank is ready to play. So really happy with getting all my vehicles to this stage. Those details really bring it to life with the muzzle burn and just adding little bits of interest like the spotlights and things like that. Well worth taking the time. I've got a little magnet here at the back, which I cover up with one of the aerials, so I can take that off when I transport it. And then I'm really happy with these details on the turret. The spotlight with that effect is nice and simple to do. I think it's worth taking the time to do those three paints. The muzzle burn is probably my favorite part though. I really liked how that turned out, as well as the view imports and all the aquilas and symbols. I think that gray with a white highlight is a really nice way to do it. So now I've got to this stage of my tank, I can move on and start finishing off the models, painting the tank commander, the tank drivers, and then I can come back to the tanks later on and add that mud and that weathering. I've also got to put the decals on, I'll be doing videos for that. But I have done all my tanks now, so I've got to that stage. And for the different parts, like any rockets or things like that, I've just used that corn red and just painted it on in a few coats, really thinned it down, but put it on in two or three coats and then didn't highlight it. I think the shape speaks for itself. So it really stands out nicely against that green. But a really fun way to do it. I love the camouflage effect. I'm really happy with my Lehman Russ and that Gatling cannon is a fantastic weapon. So cool to shoot up to 40 dice at once. That's brilliant fun. If you'd like to pick up the paints I've used in this video, or even grab hold of a few of the Lehman Rust tanks for yourself, they're awesome vehicles, then I'll put links in the description below that will take you to Element Games and Wayland Games where you can save up to 20% on all your hobby products, your paint and your models. And for every sale made to those links, I get a small commission, so you're also helping to support the channel too and keeping me going with these daily videos. I'm posting lots of videos at the moment for my Astra Militarum army build as I'm building 6,000 points of Catachans, Cadians and Tempestus Scions. So there's lots to catch up with on the channel if you haven't seen those videos already. I hope you enjoyed the video and I also hope it gave you some ideas as to how you might want to paint your tanks. And thanks so much for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did like it, please hit that like button, subscribe for more videos like this. And don't forget to hit the notification bell to join me next time on Tabletop Skirmish Games. I'd like to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make these daily videos possible. And if you're interested in joining the community, it'd be awesome to see you there. And I'll put a link for that in the description down below.